Hello. Hey, Yuval. Hey, Peter. How are you? I'm I'm fine. It's a it's a nice Tuesday morning in Seattle. We we don't have well, we had a lot of rain in the past couple of days, but not today. So that's good. Hopefully it's nice. hopefully it stays like that. <laughs> um, hello everyone. Uh, if you're watching us, say hi in the comments so we know we're not alone. Uh, this is Hoot episode sixty five, I think. And today I'll be talking to you all, and we'll be talking about some of the exciting features that I think were already checked in, right? Into their merge into Istio's code base. Uh, the title, so the title of the episode is Ambient Mesh with uh, CNI, uh, and I'll, I mean, I'll let you, you all talk about this feature, what this is, and what is so exciting about it. Um, definitely. So, a little bit background about Ambient is Itzio in Ambient mode is a way to run Itzio without a sidecar uh, using a component. Uh, called the Z tunnel that acts as a layer for proxy, right? Uh, hopefully, our audience is familiar with ETO ambient mode. And um, originally, when we created it, oh yeah, thank you. Oh Jesus, uh, hoot! Yeah, <laughs> I mean that that goes for you, you all. I'm a I'm a late comer, but. <laughs> Uh, so originally, when we created it to ambient mode, um, we need a way to get the traffic from the pod into the Z tunnel. So because the Z tunnel does policy and it does MTLS, initially we created this traffic capture from the pod to the Z tunnel in the network namespace of the host. And the thinking was that that way we can 100% capture all the pod traffic egress and ingress. There's some uh, problems when you do it from the pod network now. So it's like sidecar where there's edge cases where egress traffic might escape capture. Um, so that was what we started with. Uh, we The problem though, the, the big major problem is that there's another component that kind of owns the host network namespace, you know, uh, which is the CNI, right? So CNI needs to do, uh, basically CNI does a couple of things, I, IP management, we don't really care about that. But the part we do care about is the CNI is responsible to set up routing. And the CNI routing rules kind of collided with our traffic capturing mechanisms because we, use the same components in the networking stack. Now, to compound that problem, every CNI implements uh, its routing abilities a little bit differently. So you have IP rules, you have IP routes, and you have eBPF. And different CNIs use different subsystems, uh, different set of these subsystems in the Linux networking stack to implement routing. Uh, so even if we work to make our capture method compatible with one CNI, it wouldn't be compatible with all CNI. And it's kind of like a game where you kind of need to make sure you're compatible with each and every CNI on each and every release, because there's no uh, there's no guarantees here that the CNI might not change anything in the next release, because mm -hmm. the CNI thinks that it owns the host network namespace, right? So that kind of gives us a trade-off, whether we do stuff in the host network namespace and then we need to struggle with CNI compatibility, or we do stuff in the pod network namespace, and then we have some edge cases where egress traffic might not be captured. So we, after we tried, you know, for around a year do, going the first round, we figured why won't you, why won't we give the second uh, approach a try? And that's the, the the new thing we're releasing in ETO 121. We call that ambient in pod mode because the the capture is from the pods network namespace, and that makes ETO ambient instantly compatible with every CNI. 
So we set up the, the capturing mechanism from the pod network namespace. And so it goes from the pod network namespace into the Z tunnel. And that way the CNI is not even aware of it. To the CNI itself, it looks like a sidecar, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the benefits of a single node proxy, you know, the, the reason for MBN on the one hand, but on the other hand, for the network, it kind of looks like a sidecar, which means that it's already kind of proven out in terms of networking. So that's kind of the, the high level summary. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Instead, yeah, so instead of capturing, like if we think about like a node, we have pods running on the nodes in the original design, as the traffic was entering and exiting the pod, right, or reaching to the pod or going in and out, it was the IP tables, the rules, the routes, and all that was set on the node itself. And because CNI does the same thing, it sets up, sets up routing on the node itself, the two of them collided, right? There's no... I mean, even like I'm thinking thinking about it, even just making it work for one CNI plugin would be a pain, right? Because you have to keep it in sync, but we know that there's N of them out there, not just one, right? Uh, uh, so this change is instead of doing it on, on the node, we say, well, let's just do it inside of the pods network namespace, do it there and capture everything in there and then I guess, tunnel it directly to the Z tunnel, right? Sort of. Uh, I wouldn't use the term tunnel because it's a networking term with, and there's no networking tunnels involved here. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's a good segue to maybe we can discuss a little bit on how technically this is done. Uh, the way we do it, and, and I know MBN has some tunnels right now with the regular, you know, all the uh, previous redirection mode. So we don't need those anymore. Uh, the way we do the, uh, the the new redirection mode is that we, when the CNI sets up a pod, it gets its network namespace. Now in Linux, a network namespace is a file descriptor. What we do, we take that network namespace file descriptor and send it to the Z tunnel. So now the Z tunnel using this network namespace file descriptor can start its uh, capturing ports, you know, uh, kind of like a sidecar captures traffic, mm -hmm. it starts listening on a port. So it starts those capturing servers, capturing ports inside the port network namespace. And then we use IP tables redirection uh, rules, very similar to a sidecar. So even in terms of the redirection itself, the mechanism is very similar to how a sidecar works. Mm -hmm. We use IP tables to uh, do a redirect or a T proxy into Z tunnel sockets, and the Z tunnel sockets are open in the pod network namespace. So it's like it's it's not a it's it's a it's like a if we're not gonna call it tunnels, right? It's more of a like a, a here's I, I I'm giving you this, and then you can go through that and figure like listen to everything uh, uh, through that. Uh, uh, I don't want to use a pointer either, but it's, <laughs> it's uh, right. You said file descriptor, right? And then that has the ability, I guess that's one of the Linux features, right? Where you can hook it up and listen yeah. to it through that, right? So uh, once we get the file descriptor, we open our listening sockets in that uh, network namespace. Ah, uh, okay. So it gives you like an opening inside and allows exactly. you to open it in there. Okay. Yes. So networking wise, efficiently, it all, it has all the properties of a sidecar. Uh, in terms of you know how the packets make it from the pod to the Z tunnel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is. Uh, it sounds complex, but it's actually simple. It's it's actually more more simple simpler than it was maybe the redirection and capturing on the node itself exactly right? yeah. because now like every the same thing is done in every pod more or less 
it's similar to the way that it was done with the sidecars, right? It's just this using this technique of a file descriptor and then having the ability to listen to something. Is it correct to say to listen on specific ports through the file descriptor in, so, in that network namespace? In the network, so yeah, all, all whenever you listen on a port, it's always in the context of a network namespace. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we do is that before we start those ports, we create a socket in the network namespace of the pod. So each pod has a different socket. Uh, it's on the same port number, but in a different network namespace. Oh, so it's unique, right? In yes. that sense, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Karim was asking, and we might have already answered it. Uh, he's saying, so are we trying to build a tunnel between the pod and the proxy outside the CNI space, and then CNI will take over from the proxy onwards? So yeah, with the, the part of the tunnel we discussed, but that's the idea. We get the packets to the Z tunnel. When the Z tunnel creates an outbound connection, it does the same trick. It does it from the pods network namespace. So uh, then the CNI can take over, right? And for the CNI, it looks like a sidecar that's talking HBone. Uh, HBone is the protocol, the new protocol for ETCO. It's a, an HTTP overlay network. That's probably for another episode. Um, <laughs> but uh, the implications of that, the, the reason I'm mentioning H1, because H1 traffic is on a specific port, uh, 15,008. So the CNI will just see pod A talking to pod B on port 15,008, and it's MTLS encrypted. Um, so okay. for, And the point here is, what, one of the things that you mentioned is that the, uh, uh, so, when when the pod sends sends the packets right when it tries to call out or whatever the outgoing uh, uh, outgoing packets will go to the Z tunnel right Z tunnel will process and do whatever it needs to do, and then it will initiate the connection not from the Z tunnel itself but from the pod itself right yeah. so it will look like the from the outside, it would just you would just see the pod talking on fifteen zero zero eight to like establishing connection the H bone to some something else, right? Exactly. Okay. So there's also Kareem is also saying how can one network namespace listen to another one via file descriptor? Yes, uh, and that's a great question. So. It's not that we, when you talk about network namespaces, you got to think about what they're associated to, right? And in Linux, whenever a socket is created, it's, it's whenever the socket is created, it's associated to the network namespace it was created in. And then if you later read and write data from the socket, it doesn't matter because the, the, the network namespace is determined when the socket was created. So all that we really need to do is take the network namespace uh, that we received in the Z tunnel, uh, move, you know, it's a system called, called set and S, set our network namespace of the process, create the socket, and then revert, move back to the original, our, our original network namespace, right? To revert the set and S by another, using another set and S call. Um, and now we have a socket that we've created in the pods network namespace. And that means that from now on for throughout the socket's lifetime, it will be in the in the pod network namespace. Right? Because the the association between a socket and its network namespace is made only when it's created. Mm. Yeah, so, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, Kareem, feel free to ask follow up if if it's not not clear. And then Ben, Ben is also the one who was working on Ben Leggett, right? He was the one who was working on this feature yes. as well. So he yeah. said that globally there are many open sockets, but the actual binding of a single socket to a port is purely local to a given pods network namespace yeah yes, so exactly. from the outside it like you don't even see it right because yeah, if you more than that, from the inside you will see it yes yeah yeah but from the outside yeah. you won't right you from won't. the outside yeah. you yeah, won't yeah. yeah 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 awesome yeah so what this and you already mentioned this allows us to basically uh 
to the redirection that we know and love, right? Uh, the, <laughs> mm -hmm. That we were used to it before. However, in this case, it also allows us to have Cilium or uh, uh, any other CNI installed. Any CNI that works with a sidecar will work here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, GK is saying IP net, net NS exec pod namespace create listening socket. Can I imagine this happening within Z tunnel? Is there an equivalent of something like this? Conceptually, we, we don't okay. obviously use the IP net NS command, but it, it, you know, conceptually, yes, we use the we use a system called called set NS that IP net NS also uses. Uh, oh, okay. So that way, it's also a lot faster than calling out to an external process. But conceptually, that's how you can think about it. So you're basically saying execute execute this command inside a pod network namespace, right? Mm -hmm. And then I know Bren is also like answering questions. So if sockets namespaces are the secret sauce binding the Z tunnel to the pods, where are IP tables redirection? In the pod network namespace. Yeah. So the Z tunnel just starts a bunch of listening sockets on the pod. The other step is to get traffic to those sockets. And for mm -hmm. that, we need the IP table redirection rules. And um, the, CN, the ETO CNI component sets those up in the pod network namespace. So if you're familiar with ETO CNI, that's an alternative um, to setting up IP table rules, even for sidecars. Uh, you can use it today, you know? Uh, so you don't, it, it allows you to um, not have privileged containers, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. So the way we use it in ambient is that it injects those IP table rules that we need uh, to the pod network namespace. So everything is in the pod network namespace. There's a small amount of rules in the host network namespace that are related to uh, making um, uh, probes work, uh, readiness probes, uh, because we in ambient we don't have a mutating webhook, so we cannot inject the, the, re the rewrites that Itzio does. Uh, but other than that, it's all in the pod network namespace. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's. Uh, I think it's a great explanation. I'll also uh, paste in the the document, the design doc, right? And that one has like in the chat. If anyone uh, uh, is interested more in like more details, I guess I would say, or a high level overview of uh, uh, how this works, how it was like thought through what was the background and all that. And then the actual PR, if people want to look at the code, uh, I know there's a there's a lot of a lot of stuff there, but uh, if if you're interested in how this is implemented, I've pasted the the pull request as well. Uh, uh, so you can go and take a look on how this works. Um, are we ready to do a demo maybe? Uh, yeah, I just want to Paste the other, there's the second part, uh, the Itzio part of the code. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, yeah, oh, you're right. This one was on the Z tunnel one side. Um, also, Karima saying so the Z tunnel will maintain a socket for each of the pods running. Are there any drawbacks, performance issues? Sorry, ignorant about Linux. So, when you think about it, a sidecar does the same thing, right? A sidecar also opens sockets in, in each pod. So I don't don't expect it to be very different than a sidecar in terms of performance. Mm. And there's no, but with the difference of in the sidecar deployment model, you actually have a second container that's running inside that pod, whereas here it's just a tube. If we're not yeah. calling it a tunnel, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just a file descriptor, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's no. Yeah, within the Z tunnel, there's no additional container. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm sure we'll probably have some like performance, maybe I don't know, uh, at some point. But I, it's it's probably not gonna be too. Yeah, no, it, it'll probably, yeah. I mean, this whole ambient mode is pretty new, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's room to optimize, but mm. I, I would be surprised if it will be due to this mechanism. Because when you think about it, it's kind of very familiar, we're very familiar with it. Mm. Yeah. From uh, Sidecar, yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you find the link to, to the oh, other portion on the, <laughs> I know I was. Uh... Uh, let me find it. 
so people have the full uh, uh yeah let me see can i join the chat here you can probably comment i think uh, uh no it's complicated i'll send it to you yeah and... send, it, send it to me and I'll, I'll paste it i'll paste it in uh if people want to do a post merge code review and uh, <laughs> but this one is uh, just uh, got one approval we're waiting for another it'll be merged shortly perfect so this is the istio side of the pr oh and this one is still open so yeah if anyone wants to provide feedback <laughs> uh, feel free to go and just look at the code but it's yeah it's always interesting to look at the prs and just see like uh I mean, code is interesting to see anyway, but it's more of a just see the thinking behind it, right? And all the like questions and uh, uh, like issues that people bring up uh, uh, oh, yeah. as this as this is being implemented. Uh, all right, so I pasted that one. Um, you do have a demo. You mentioned you have a demo, so should we go and uh, uh, look look at that? Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. as like if if there are questions, feel free to ask. Uh, and I'll, as soon as I see your screen, we'll share it. And uh, there it is. It's working. Do you see it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So first, let me just give a brief overview of what's going on here. Actually, let me not do wide. It's a bit too small for that. Um, I just have here a setup with Cilium installed as the CNI just to show, you know, we say it works in every CNI. We want to show it. Uh, we have Itzio. Uh, I will this one from source because uh, you know the PRs are not merged yet. But it's basically it's the code from these these PRs, and we have booking for just you know as a as a demo demo application. I label the default namespace so it's included in in ambient. So all these pods are already ambient enabled. Mm. Um. So uh, let me uh, let's just see the traffic is working. Blah blah blah. From reviews to uh, ratings, uh, not found, but it's fine. It's working. And from ratings to reviews, this one let me, history failure. Yes, also everything is working great. Um, you can also see that the traffic makes it to the Z tunnel. If we look uh, at the Z tunnel pod, this time I don't need the Y. Uh, so reviews is on worker two. So we'll grab the Z tunnel that's on worker two. This one. And I have debug logging enabled. So we can see that there'll be a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things going on here. Sorry, I just want to show the ratings. You can see it in the bottom here. There we go. So you can see that we have a uh, traffic um, of the the connections I just made coming through the Z tunnel. Uh, now. Uh, the next interesting thing probably to show is that network policies work, right? So I have here two policies. I have here a Cilium policy and I have here an Itzio policy. And I want to show that both of them work. So the Cilium policy will only allow access to a ratings from the product page. And uh, the Itzio policy essentially does the same thing, but you know, in Itzio. Uh, now, the way Cilium policy works is that it drops packets. So meaning that when we will curl, we'll see curl hang because its packets will drop and it will time out. Yeah, yeah. The way Itzio policy works is that traffic gets redirected to the Z tunnel and Z tunnel will close the connection if there's a policy violation. So curl will terminate immediately with connection reset by peer. Uh, so I think we can you know, apply each of these policies and kind of just see that what we expect to happen actually happens. 
Uh, oh, the first one, I, I sorry, I, uh, I mismatched the name. I call it ratings, but they're actually for reviews. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, we'll continue anyway. And if anyone wants to try this out, uh, I mean, you can, I think in one of the PRs, if anyone is very eager and they really, really want to try it out, like today, uh, I know in one of the PRs, there was a, there were some instructions on how to do it, but you basically would have to build, right, uh, from your branch, right, build this yeah. and then, uh, run it like that. Or you can wait for Istio 121. Uh, to come out and it'll be available there, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. So now I apply the network policy. Uh, let's see what's happening. Yeah. And it's hanging, right? Hanging out. It's, it's a, uh, we apply the serial network policy. And like mentioned, eventually it, it timed out, but it kind of hang there uh, because, uh, uh, you know, the packets were dropped. Uh, so this is just to show that the Z-Tunnel, you know, capturing mechanism doesn't interfere with Cilium. And now let's apply the other policy, the authorization policy, and we'll see what happens when we, this time we need the other way around because the auth policy blocks, is a, applies to ratings. So we want to curl two ratings. And you can see that it immediately exited with connection reset by peer. Uh, because what happened here is that the connection made it into the Z tunnel and was, you know, immediately terminated. Yeah. So Z, Z tunnel is the one that evaluates, right, the L4, uh, uh, L4 policies. And I yeah. think we could definitely see the uh, RBAC error, uh, oh, yeah. I think, in the, in the Z, -tunnel, uh, Z tunnel pod as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Basically saying that this was, uh, uh, this didn't uh, yeah, here we go. reject it, right? There you go. Yeah. So inbound from the book, from the reviews, right? To yes. the, whatever the destination, uh, the destination was. Yeah. Yeah. And if we remove the policies, you can see, you know, everything is, uh, sorry, to do that. Everything is back to normal for, for no found and the other one when we, Curl reviews also for for yeah, yeah. so everything kind of works as expected. So you can see that with input mode, the CNI policies work just the same, with the one caveat that now everything to the CNI looks like H bone. So if I were to do policies that include the port, that would be problematic because now all the ports, all the album ports are fifteen thousand and eight according to the age one spec. Uh, okay, so if, if I want, so let's say I have an existing deployment of like Kubernetes clusters with Cilium and I'm using ports in my policies, what I would have to do to make that work is basically 15.008. Use the, uh, those ports or, or? Or not use the ports, yeah. Oh, okay, or just remove the ports and yeah. yeah and, I mean, we'll... we we talk with our customers, and most of them, I think up to a hundred percent. I don't I don't have the numbers, but most of them don't have ports in their network policy. Oh, uh, okay, so it's not it's necessarily yeah. control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Karim is asking: so network policy can still be applied on the pod and will apply before traffic gets to Z tunnel. Actually, after. Because Z tunnel gets the traffic from the pod network namespace, it gets it first, does whatever it needs to do, then initiates a connection outbound, right? But okay, so depends on which direction. On the egress, the Z tunnel gets it first. On the ingress, yes, the CNI gets it first. So Right, the flow is a packet makes it to the from the pod to the Z tunnel and then back out to the CNI and then from the CNI in reverse to, yeah, yeah. to the pod, from the pod to the Z tunnel and then back to the original app. So uh, ingress policies, yes, the CNI will take effect first. Yeah, yeah. So what is is there a uh, like is there a value in having like network policies? configured as well as Istio's authorization policies on top of it in terms of a more of a, like a, a 
secure it on the, I guess, endpoint network level with the CNI, but then also have an, an authorization policy on the Istio side as well. Is there a value in having that or? So that's a really broad discussion and uh, there's trade-offs and there's definitely value. And um, there's, you can talk about defense in depth, kind of trying to create multiple mechanisms to cover the same thing in case one of them fails. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about the differences between ETHIO and, and networking. Uh, ETHIO policy is cryptographically uh, based. Uh, we use the MTLS handshake to perform these decisions. Um, but eventually it is trade-offs, right? Because there, there's more components, more stuff to manage. Um, you know, uh, not, not to uh, to our own horn, but we do have a product that kind of does this for you, that you give it one policy and it translates to both Syrian policy and its your policy at the same time to kind of save you the management headache. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of, you know, it's like every, every every engineering decision, there's no one best answer. Uh, but but there's definitely value to do both. It's mm -hmm. not, yeah, it's not uh, something I, I wouldn't consider. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another one, uh, routes in a Z tunnel pod are local to a node or Z tunnel also knows about pods from other nodes. Yes, Z tunnel knows about all the pods in the cluster uh, and that's Z tunnel is the component responsible to doing the MTLS between those pods. So it has to know when it reaches out to a remote pod, it has to know if it's in the cluster or not. So it can do MTLS. And there's a bunch of other reasons that I don't I, I don't want to get too much into because it's, it's a bit off topic. There's a waypoint. There's a, yeah, yeah. a VIP resolution, all that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. But basically, Z tunnels on each node know about every pod that's running in the cluster. Mm -hmm. If for nothing else, just so they can pick the correct identity <laughs> to right to impersonate right when they're. So for that, the Z tunnel only need the local pods. Um, but ah, okay, need, because uh, it's calling out. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you call out, you need to know, especially think about migration, right? You need to know if the other pod in the other end will understand the H bomb. So mm -hmm. that's okay. also why it's important. Uh, Kareem, is all traffic redirected at IP tables? For example, if I were to ping from the pod to Google DNS server, does this still go through Z tunnel or only east-west traffic? Yes. Yeah, so uh, DNS is currently Z tunnel only supports TCP. Um, DNS, with the exception of DNS, we need DNS to be captured because uh, it has a feature called service entries that allows you to create custom, you know, services with their domain names. So we capture DNS uh, for that purpose. Uh, other UDP will not be captured currently, but that's something we, we plan to improve. Okay. So if I would, let's say an example, if I, if I do kubectl exec into a pod and then do a curl to solo.io, Mm -hmm. Will that go through the Z tunnel? Will yeah. it get cap? It will, right? It will go through the Z tunnel, and then Z tunnel will say, "I don't know." I mean, it's not. I'm not gonna do MTLS because, right? I don't know what yeah, that yeah, is, exactly. and it's just gonna send. And then, in the same, if since you mentioned service entries, I'm assuming the same um, outbound traffic policy mode will be. You'll be able to use it, and then say, registry only or uh, what is the other one? Uh, uh, allow any, right? I, I'm not sure. I think we had a discussion about registry only. I'm, I'm not sure where that stands. Maybe Ben uh, okay. remember. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in just for 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 others uh, uh, who might not be aware of it. So by default, Istio Istio's outbound traffic policy mode is set to allow any, so you can curl from within a pod that's part of the mesh to Google, Solo, whatever website, whatever API. However, if you change that to registry only, then the any connection, any any requests made to um, made to destinations that are not part of the STO's uh, service registry will be sent to a black hole cluster, right? It's not gonna yeah. uh, it's not gonna let it through. 
Uh, I will say one thing about that, that we don't consider registry only a security boundary. Yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not a security boundary, you know, but it's just, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Lynn is here. So Lynn, Lynn is chiming in. Oh, so right, right now, Z Tunnel is allow any, we are not looking into supporting uh, registry only at the moment. Okay, so that that answers the question, uh, which I mean, kind of uh, uh, makes sense because a lot of uh, like I've seen a lot of people like years ago and before even that uh, thinking that this is a security like a feature, security feature. Yeah. They're saying, oh, if I set it to registry only, then I'm fine. No one, no one will be able to reach out of the cluster, and that's not true, right? Um, yeah uh all right uh yeah and i think yeah registry only isn't a security i think that's what lynn meant but i'm not gonna yeah, <laughs> yeah. um all right uh any do we have anything else that you wanted to share you all or uh, i think that's that's the main parts Um we mainly are very you know this is a couple of months of work that we've done here and we're very excited about it and we really really want to get community feedback it, does this make sense for everybody is this kind of help you adopt ambient we really believe that ambient is the future for it's here and we want to get it to the hands of as many people as possible it's kind of trying to make it simpler, uh, easier, and uh, educate people about it. So, you know, we'd love to get the feedback so we can kind of iterate and make sure it's going where the users want it to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, Ben, a couple, of, a couple of questions coming in. So Ben is saying that use policy for policy, not flags. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, like anything, use authorization and other policies. Um, uh, GK. So for workloads within ambient mesh, Z Tunnel sets up all the routing. So essentially, CNI routes are only used for traffic outside of uh, the mesh. Not not exactly in ambient mesh. Uh, the Z, uh, technically, the Z Tunnel doesn't set up any routing. The ETSIO CNI component sets up IP table rules for the Z Tunnel. The Z Tunnel still relies on the CNI. So the Z tunnel will make a connection to a remote pod and it will rely on the CNI to route that connection to the remote pod. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, the CNI routes work as they are today. The, the only difference is that the CNI will observe all the outgoing traffic with, with the H1 port, with the 15,008. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, one from Anthony. So maybe I missed something. Can ambient mesh work with all CNIs? Starting 121, yes. Yes. On with a, yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. yeah. So STO 121, uh, do we know when it's coming out? Uh, good thing we have Lynn and Ben in the chat. Yeah, maybe Lynn and Ben can chime in on when, when 121 is coming out. But in any case, it's uh, how is it, let's say I... Uh, uh, I have a company, we're using uh, Cilium or not, but we're very excited about like ambient. Can I just go and grab 121 and run it in production or? I would not run it in production just yet. Once we call ambient beta, that's how you know that it's a, we consider it safe for, for production. So there's a lot of new stuff going on that's uh, exciting and makes everything a lot easier. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is new, so you know we want some time to kind of test it out and make sure that all the the kinks are sorted out. Yeah. So any like upstream STO one twenty one still don't use it in production. However, I think we at Solo right, if people want to use uh, 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 ambient right in production, right, they yes. can uh, uh, will support it's, you. It's, right? Exactly. So we. Um, Input mode was developed internally at Solo at first because we wanted to prove out the concept before, you know, opening it, um, adding it to upstream Itzio. So we have more experience in it. And so we can offer production support for ambient. So if you're using, you know, uh, Solo, you, you can run this in production. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and while we were talking, uh, Ben is saying that branch cut is imminent in the next few days. And then Lynn mentioned that February sometime uh, for the uh, 121 uh, to be uh, out there. So uh, very exciting indeed. I think it's a great, like, in such a short amount of time, if you think about, right, how long was Ambient out there, if you think about it, when it came out uh, originally, there's a, there's been a lot of... Uh, a lot of improvements, a lot of exciting things. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. I tried this out and it worked on my machine with the <laughs> with the uh, bits that I built on my own. But if you're interested, one, wait for 121. Or if you like want to run Ambient today, I guess in production, Solo can uh, Solo can offer offer that. Right. Um, all right. Uh, if there are any Questions I or question yeah. from Kareem about network policies. Um, ah, yeah, I missed that one. There you go. So, question was: since the traffic from pod externally went through Z Tunnel, Cilium has a feature of identities. Is the source identity still the original pod, or the Z Tunnel is the? That's original. a great question. Um, so the answer is it will be the original pod, and to understand why is. Z-Tunnel initiates the traffic from the pod network namespace. So, and because Cilium identities, eventually they kind of map into, uh, Cilium looks into the packet, looks at the IPs and maps them to identities, right? So because the Z-Tunnel initiates outbound connections from the pods network namespace, the Cilium identity will still work, right? The only thing impacted is, like I said, is the port. Mm, okay. All right. Well, ho hopefully this answered the question, Kareem. Um, all right. Uh, well, I'm trying to scroll down. There's there's some more more questions there uh, from Iris. For the pod outbound traffic, will Z Tunnel create two sockets for handling it? One for listening socket, one for outbound traffic in the pod network namespace. So Z Tunnel has a constant number of listening sockets. I think it's three or four. Uh, and then outbound sockets, it, it depends, the number depends because of HBON, we can multiplex multiple TCP connections in a single HBON connection. Uh, but it's not going to be uh, two sockets for one because the listening socket is always, it's a constant number. The mm -hmm. variable number is the outbound sockets. And even there, it's not exactly one to one because of that multiplexing. And uh, so, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not the listening is always going to be listening on one, and then for the outbound is going to be dynamic, I guess, right? Because yes, dynamic, uh, probably less than or equal the number of real outbound connections. Connections. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, thank you, Yuval, for taking the time. I think this was this was very useful for me as well to to get like these. Uh, uh, technical details on a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I hope everyone was watching that this was useful. If you have, if anyone has any more questions or uh, wants to try this out or want to like chat with Yuval or chat with me or ask additional questions, uh, slack.solo.io if you want to join the, like our solo community or uh, Istio Slack as well. I think we're, we're all there uh, and uh, yeah, th thanks again, Yuval, for taking Thank the time. You. Thank you for having me, and I was excited to be back. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have you do a couple of more next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time.